Well, as we've seen over the weekend with the tragic events in Paris, social media can bring people from all parts of the world together, but it also has a very dark side. Susan Carland is a Muslim sociologist, academic and wife of Channel 10 favourite Waleed Ali, but she's also been the victim of online bullies who abuse her just because of her faith. However, instead of getting angry for every mean tweet she receives, she has decided to donate a dollar to UNICEF. <laughs> and Susan joins us now live from Melbourne. Susan, thanks so much for joining us today. <laughs> thanks for having me. This is a pretty brave campaign of yours. Uh, are, are you going to go broke, do you think? <laughs> well, I'm starting to wonder that, and I think my husband's starting to worry about that as well. You know, when I started, there wasn't really any media interest. It was just something I wanted to do to live what I believed, I guess. Um, but I'm already past, well past $1,000 now, so it's certainly adding up. Really? What sort of messages were you getting, Susan? Um, it's sort of the standard ones of people just telling me exactly what they think of me, um, what they think I believe, so they'll say to me, oh, you love terror, you love war, you love killing people, you love oppressing women. Some people send me, like one man sent, spent the morning just uh, sending me tweets of corpses, so mm. it can be pretty vile. Mm. Which is ironically what terrorists also do. Mm. Yeah, it, it's funny that. Mm. But Susan, good on you. Uh, what I'm really interested in is that you converted to Islam at the age of 19. You mentioned there that some of the tweets you've got from people is talks about Islam oppressing women. What would you say to that in response? Well, I actually did my PhD thesis on uh, Muslim feminists. So, I, mm. you know, I always find it ironic when people try to tell me what I think about uh, Islam and sexism. And what I would say is that while, um, you know, certainly there are Muslim women around the world in horrifically oppressive situations, um, and I would never want to deny that, like mm. in, in, in any community that sexism mm. exists, um, so many Muslim women and the women that I interviewed for my PhD would say that is a perversion of what Islam brings. Mm. Um, they feel that Islam is actually something they can use to help them achieve the rights they deserve and we shouldn't be throwing the baby out with the bathwater. Mm. But do you think there's any way of dealing effectively with the Twitter bullies? Well, I, the whole reason I started this was that I felt like I, what I was doing wasn't changing anything. I tried blocking, muting, ignoring, I tried engaging with them. Nothing seemed to stop them. This just seemed to be what they were going to do regardless. And I thought, well, if I can't stop them, how can I at least push some light or some good mm -hmm. out into the world um, to sort of counteract all the ugliness and hate that they're bringing? Um, and that's where the idea came from. So I don't think it will stop them. But for me, it's not actually about what they're doing. It's about, well, what, who am I and what are my values mm. and what am I going to try to do mm. in the world? Mm. And um, what, what's been the response in the Muslim community to the events in Paris and, of course, there was Beirut as well? Um, is, is there... I know I've been um, speaking to some, some friends there and there's been some very strong uh, messages of condemnation, um, but there's also been, I suppose, some uh, equivocation from at least one statement I've seen. What's the mood among your, your friends or your circle? I think the mood amongst all of my friends is the same of anyone else. It's just shock and grief. I think it's that's the natural human response. How could you think anything else when you see that carnage and horror? Mm. Um, I, the, the human response in all of us is just such sadness and grief. Everyone's devastated by this. Susan, I noticed, um, I was following you on Twitter, I noticed that you retweeted a tweet over the weekend after the Paris attacks from US actor Mark Ruffalo saying, don't allow this horrific act to allow you to be drawn into the loss of your humanity or tolerance. This is the intended outcome, talking about the terrorists. Absolutely, and I think that's something we really need to keep in mind, that um, one of the, you know... A Society tearing itself apart is actually one of the intended outcomes of terrorist mm. attacks done by ISIS. This is what they want. ISIS have openly spoken about wanting to eliminate the grey area. They want mm. a world that is black and white, that is us and them, that is good and evil as far as they define it. And so a flourishing pluralistic society is the last thing ISIS want mm. to see. And so in times like this, we all have to make the choice about whether we retreat into fear and anger and blaming mm. or whether we we actively choose to come together and say we will not uh, allow this to pull us apart because that is actually part of the goal. This is it, it's a political tactic that is part of this uh, their approach, and we can never let those be the people who define us as individuals or as a community. Mm. I Susan, I think it's probably worth remembering also that ISIS is killing many Muslims as well. Mm. 
Absolutely. I mean, in their own magazine, ISIS talk about, they list all the Muslims they think deserve to die as well. ISIS are no friends to Muslim by any stretch of the imagination. And so it's really important that we never fall into the trap of thinking this is about Muslims against other people or, or anything like this. This is about a very, very problematic group uh, who are trying to set themselves up against the rest of the world. And to say that all Muslims would be with them, nothing could be further from the truth. Mm. Susan, what was it about Islam that drew you towards that, that faith? Why was it that you decided to convert at the age of 19? Um, I think it was just uh, when I was a teenager, I started to wonder why I believed what I did. Is it because I think it's true or this is just what I'd been raised to believe? And so I decided to look into lots of different religions and approaches to life. And much to my surprise, when I saw what Islam taught about itself, as opposed to what I saw people doing in the, name, in the name of Islam or what I saw on sensationalist programs and actually got to, well, what is the ethos of this religion? Um, to my surprise, it made a lot of sense to me. Um, but it took me a few years to get to that point because, um, uh, you know, it's not a decision that you would mm. make lightly, certainly in, in the current climate. But what is the eth mm. ethos of this religion? For me, it was actually something that was very much uh, about, despite what we are seeing today in, by the actions of ISIS, very much one about compassion, which is why, for example, I'm doing this $1 uh, tweet for every hate-filled tweet, because for me, that is me being motivated mm. by my religion. My religion is about, it specifically says in the Quran, repel evil with what is better, repel evil with what is good. We shouldn't be people who are bringing evil, we should be people who are trying to stop it and mm. change it and make the world better. And so, you're always going to have awful people doing crazy things in any the name of any religion or any ideology. Um, and I can't let them define me. I have to let what defines me be my values and what I know to be true. And that's the same for the other billion Muslims mm. on the planet. ISIS is such a, you know, 0.001 percent mm. of our community. And it's devastating for us that anyone could look at them and think that that is who we are. Susan, just super quickly, we've all got young children. We're very concerned about the future of our world. This morning we've heard developments about that France has reportedly started to bomb Syria again. You were talking about that we can't have a knee-jerk reaction. What are your thoughts on what's happened this morning? Well, I mean, my first thought was um, concern for... You know, there are a lot of innocent uh, people living in Raqqa under ISIS that don't particularly want to be. You know, it's not like Raqqa is just run only by ISIS people who want to be. There are a lot of innocent uh, Syrians and Iraqis who are caught up under them as well. And um, so my first thought was, you know, innocent people who have been trapped under this rule for, for however long are now being bonded as well. And, and so in all of these circumstances, wherever uh, violence or war happens, my concern and thought is always for the innocent people who are suffering and who get caught up in things that they have no control over. Um, and I guess that's where my, my primary concern would lie. Susan, thank you so much for joining us and for sharing your wonderful insight today. Thank you. Here to come this morning on Studio 10, there's a dream date on offer. How you can win a night out with Chris Hemsworth. And has all the latest details in just a moment.